future. Remains a very, very good FA Cup final. And Hatchin! Good evening and welcome to All Things Sky Blue match preview semi-final at Wembley against Manchester United. Just before I bring my guests in, uh, let me just remind you guys where you can find us. We are on Twitter or X, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. We're on YouTube. If you go and like and subscribe, we're much appreciated. Uh, our followers are going up quite nicely now. Uh, if you follow us on podcasts, uh, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever else you get your podcasts from, please go and rate us five stars on there. We're sponsored by Right Steel Fabrications. His logo is in the corner. You can do your steel fabrication work up and down the country, but mainly in the West Midlands and Coventry area. And we're also partnered with the Anecdote Sports Bar at the CBS Arena. So... Bit of a special one, guys. Uh, we've got, uh, we'll have Jay in shortly from Stretford Paddock, uh, the legendary podcast that they are. Uh, but first of all, let me bring Mark in. Good evening, Mark. How are you? Hi, uh, Stuart. Yeah, good. Thanks, Steph. Yeah, not too bad. Thank you. Are you excited? A week on Saturday, our annual trip to Wembley. How are you feeling about it? Uh, I'm like a kid in a sweet shot, really. <laughs> And I've been think I've been dreaming about uh, playing the great Man United side. Um, maybe not as great as as they have been in previous uh, seasons, but nonetheless, it's Manchester United. It, it's uh, a great a great occasion, um, and bring them on. That's what I say. Definitely, definitely. And on that note, let's bring in Jay from the Stretford Paddock. How are you, Jay? I'm I'm all right. I'm good. It is. Did you say a week on Saturday? Is it? Is it Sunday. a week on Saturday? Is it? Oh, oh sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, week on Sunday. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I, I thought you had me in a panic then because I was like, do I need to uh, do I need to make, change my plans? No, so, no, no. It's, it's a week on Sunday. Sorry. Yeah. Sunday. Yeah, no, it's, it's because we, you're so used to playing like Sundays. Like we we play a lot of Saturdays. So Sundays <laughs> is Asian Saturday. That's what it is. That's what I'm just gonna uh, I mean light's a bit bright, forgive me. I'm just gonna turn No worries, that's down, fine, mate. If you're wondering what I'm doing. There you go. That, that's oh, it. There you, there, go. there you go. Yeah. Lovely. I, I looked like I was being interrogated. There. I, was like, I was like, what's going on here? I don't even know what's it before. Forgive me. I thought it was on Mastermind or something. I know. Like, I thought, I'm not that bright. What's going on? Yeah. No, that's Sorry. fine, mate. That's fine. Uh, again, once again, thank you very much for coming on. You know, we, we know how much of a big um, sort of Manchester United, you know, podcast that you are. So it's, it's, it's great that you've. Uh, that you've accepted and, and come on our show. It's been brilliant. So thank you very much. No, not at all, man. Thanks for inviting me on. No, brilliant. Uh, before we uh, we get into sort of the history and, and the route and, and, and such a like, can you just let us know where we can find you and what you guys do? Yeah, you can find us on Stretford Paddock. Uh, basically, we cover all Manchester United news. We do previews, reviews, interviews, um, watch-alongs. So I think... Hopefully, if you're a United fan, you'll know who we are. Um, <laughs> and if you're a commentary fan, and maybe you also have a look, a little look about what United are, where United are at at the minute. Uh, hopefully, you can get a pretty good sort of gauge of that by watching Stretford Paddock because we'll cover like all the games, all the recent games. We have news updates every day from outside Old Trafford, so you can get a bit of a sort of feel as to. The, the shambles that is Manchester United at the minute, to be honest with you. I'm not going to lie. It's like I know. This, this FA Cup run has, has been a, a bit of a, a, a sort of a, you know, lone light, if you will, in a pretty yeah. dark tunnel because yeah. it's been a it's been a really difficult season. And thankfully, we've still got a chance of ending on a high. But in terms of the league and the Champions League, it's been pretty disastrous. Yeah, yeah. Um, Look, obviously, I, 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 again, I don't, I'm not sure about Mark. I think he does, but we fought. You know, I play FPL. You know, I follow, I, I follow, I follow football. You know, a lot, whether it's the Championship or the Premier League. So I know the turmoil that that's happening at United, and 
you know, a week on Sunday, I got it right this time, a week on Sunday, um, you know, I think, look, as much as probably United were happy that they got Coventry, I think a lot of Coventry fans at the minute would would have wanted Manchester United. Uh, I think that's fair to say. So, let's go through the history then. The last time that we played, I think it was 20... Uh, no, it was 07, I think, wasn't it, Mark? Yeah. Uh, and it was in a League Cup game at Old Trafford. Uh, and we won 2-0. Uh, uh, Michael Misford scored both goals at the Moscow team. That sort of um, elevated his you know, his, his status in Coventry legendary-ness, if you like, really. You know, you had some good players uh, playing for you then as well. We actually did an interview with Misford uh, leading up to, to the game as well because it linked quite nicely. Um, you know, you had PK, uh, you had Carrick come on, I think, as a substitute. You had Anderson at the time. Um, you had some really, really top, you know, top track players, but we managed to beat you on your home patch. It has before that, it wasn't the greatest. Uh, do you remember any games? Did any games stand out for you, Jay, for Coventry? Or against Coventry? There's two, yeah, there's two games that stand out um, for very different reasons. Um, one game that stands out is uh, Highfield Road, I believe, in 93, yep. um, when Denny Serwin scored the winner. And the reason that stands out for me, I was only a kid. I wasn't there at the time, but I remember, I think this is, I remember listening to it on the radio. This is how, how, um, how long ago it was. <laughs> but it was, a, if, if memory serves it, my memory of football matches is terrible. So forget Yeah, mine is, think, mine no, is as well. I, yeah, I think Villa had won that day and they had either gone top or were top or were top by a point or whatever and it put pressure on United and we had to get a result against Coventry and Dennis Serwin scored um, a bit of a world if from about 20 yards out, really good finish and that kept us in the title race and then from then on we obviously went on to win it and that was our first Premier League title, the first Premier League title anyone won it, it was the first year of the Premier League. So that one yes. always stands out as that result against Coventry being vital. Whenever I have this argument, I have this argument a lot with people about Denny Serbin and how good he was and how he's won. For me, the, the best fullback I've ever seen in the Premier League and how he should be in that conversation a bit more. And I always yeah. mention the fact that he could also pop up with a goal when you needed one as yeah, he did yeah, at Highfield yeah. uh, Road back in 93. The other game, and I'm not trying to be morbid, it's just a game that sticks out in my mind. I was at the game when uh, David Bust had his injury. Yeah. Um, I was, again, I was only a kid. Um, I didn't see it but we were aware because Peter Schmeichel, I think, basically threw up. Yeah, it was it was you know it was Schmeichel's face that sticks in yeah. my mind very vividly, vividly about that game. And I'm cleaning the pitch and everything. Um, yeah. Just a horrendous injury. You wouldn't wish it on anyone at no. all. And it was so sad. The, the the crowd, the you know the United fans were were gutted for him. This yeah. this young lad because it's one of those injuries where even if you didn't see it, you can tell something's gone on here that. He's not going to play football again, probably. And he, I don't think yeah. he did. Um, I think he had a, a testimony as well at, at United, I think. Again, That's right, he did, yeah. But he got yeah. a stand innovation. He was very well received, rightly so, because it was a sad, sad time to see that. But I remember that when I was, you know, going to the Premier League in the early days, Coventry were a good side, were a part of the Premier League, as much a part of the Premier League as any anyone else. Um, and it was, it, was, it was sad to see it when you, you guys went through the difficulties that you went through. With the ownership, yeah. which is some United fans can relate to, I know it's different <laughs> levels, but we know yeah, what it's yeah, like yeah. to have owners who don't have a club's best interests at heart. And yeah. I always had a bit of a fondness for Coventry, and it's sad because it reminded me of that era and that time when football was just a bit more simpler, if you will, for one of a better yes. expression, before it became yeah. all about owners Money. and all the rest of it and some yeah. sports washing or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, it was sad when I saw you struggling with the ground and where you know having nowhere to play and. It's been good to see you, you doing well, and, and Mark Robbins is, is someone who's etched into Manchester United folklore for that goal at Nottingham Forest that maybe did or didn't save Sir Alex <laughs> Ferguson's job, depending on who you talk to. <laughs> That's right, yeah, yeah. So um, it's it's good to see you guys doing well. Obviously, I want to beat you, but it's it's you know Coventry for me will always be one of the big clubs because of that history you've got and that part you played in those formative years of the Premier League. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. So, um, let's go into, if you like, how your route sort of into the uh, into the semi final. So, first of all, I believe that you beat Wigan in the third round. 
Uh, 2-0. I think it was quite convincing, if I remember rightly. Uh, you had Dallow score and Fernandez score. Did you go to the game? How was the game for you? I was at the studio for the game. We do watch alongs for a lot of the game. And I'll be honest oh, with you, okay. I do, I've got a season ticket, but I don't do many aways anymore. Um, and that game was, it's funny you say it's relatively convincing. It was a game that a lot of fans were moaning about because it was like, we missed a lot of chances and it's Wigan and oh, we should be battering them and all that sort of stuff. And for me, it was just a case of let's just win the game. Let's just not have any dramas. Let's not make it a difficult one or one where we need a, a replay or extra time or whatever it was for that round. Um, so, yeah, it was a, a relatively easy day in the office. And it's one of those games where, because you've got so many chances, even when you miss them, you don't worry because you're thinking, we'll just get more chances than we did. And we, we, took, a, we took enough to make it a, a pretty sort of boring game, even being brutally honest. It wasn't very exciting, yeah. but we did what we needed to do. And yeah. it could have been a little bit of a banana skin, but thankfully it wasn't. We got through and, you know, like I said, we're through to the next round and happy days. Especially with yeah. the, the rounds that the, the draw that we had afterwards, which I think you, you're going to get into. Yeah, 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 definitely. Obviously, your next round uh, was Newport in the fourth round, uh, four two. But that one wasn't quite convincing. They may, managed to peg you back to two wall, didn't they? How was you feeling at that point? Was you nervous? I, I wasn't nervous. I was annoyed because it was like we were comfortable for once. United have never been comfortable this season. Everything's <laughs> dramatic. Everything's a headache. You'll have seen the Chelsea game the other day. That summed it up. Yeah. Yeah, you know, only United this season could be winning in the 97th minute and still lose. And it was like <laughs> that game summed up Newport, it was 17th, I think, in League Two. So they weren't, I think they were, or they are like they, they weren't even they were barely in the league, or they were barely, you know, they were they weren't yeah. flying high in their division. They were struggling. You go 2 0 up, you think, okay, maybe this could be a bit of a, a route. Maybe we can hit them for four or five or whatever. And it's you know, they're back in it. <laughs> and you go from thinking, are we going to give them a bit of an hiding? So are we even going to get past them? Are we going to win? Yeah. And in the end, I think we got the, the two goals um, to sort of, to, to make it you know relatively comfortable. I think it was Anthony and Hoyland deep into injury time. That's right, it was, yeah. It, it was, it's one of those games where it throws up more questions and answers, where people start going, really? You can't even hold a, a two-goal lead against Newport. You, you, you're struggling against them. And yeah, it was it was one of those where I know this is going to sound proper spoiled, but we are United fans, so we are a bit spoiled. Where you <laughs> question everything. You're not, are you? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, we used, we used to be. Now, now the glory hunters are down the road. Believe it or not, which is I never thought. I'd say. Oh God. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was it was a an, an annoying game really because Newport, for all the, the their energy and their effort and the the, the, the sort of you know the. The, the romance of the FA Cup and all that nonsense. You should be beating Newport County comfortably, and we made hard work of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, in the fifth round, you drew uh, Forest, uh, a Premiership side, and they're not a bad Premiership side. To be fair, I know that you know, I know they're having their issues uh, as well, and things hanging over their heads and stuff. Um, but. What, what was the game like for you? Because you only just won it and you won it late on as well in the 89th minute, Casemiro goal. What was the game like for you, that one? Was it a little bit nervy? Do you think it was going to go into a replay? Um, I, I, I felt Forrest seemed to fall off a bit of a cliff on this one. The game was sort of pretty even until the second half, if memory serves. And then in the second half, they ran out of steam coming. Uh, sorry. Forest. Forest. They, they just did. It was like you could see they were getting leggy. They were giving the ball away quite a lot. I think Bruno Fernandes started to take control of the game. And I actually felt, and I'm not a confident United fan by any stretch of the imagination, I'm always sort of pessimistic and fear the worst. But I felt pretty confident we could get a result that night. And we did. Obviously, we, we got the, the late Casemiro goal. But I did feel like this is coming. If you, 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 you sensed it was coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you sensed that Forest had just ran out of steam. And that was the case. So, yeah, because Forrest have beaten us in the league at their ground that season. They have this season, sorry, they've beaten us. And the, the you know, they are a good side. Like you say, I know they've had the problems and they're struggling a little bit in the Premier League. Well, they're struggling in the Premier League. Let's not sugarcoat it. But yeah. they're not a, a pushover. Certainly not a, a team that you look at and go, well, that's easy. Especially when you've lost there already this season. So, that was up until that point anyway, the, probably the best performance by United. I thought the second half performance against Forrest was much better. And... That might have they might have helped us by 
being knackered, but we still had to do do what we had to do, and we did it. Yeah, um, obviously that led to the quarter final. Uh, I would like to say that it might have been the game of the tie, but I think ours might have just edged it slightly. Uh, but uh, obviously against Liverpool, um, a dramatic four three. Uh, win. Rashford couldn't score for Toffee if he tried and then he did, you know, and then obviously Ahmad Diallo scored uh, the uh, the fourth goal on the breakaway. What was the game like? Did you think you were going to get over the line or do you think it was going to be one of them games where it was, you know, all the chances fell to you and you just couldn't put them away? It was genuinely one of the best games I've ever been to. It's up there and I've seen United win all sorts of trophies. I've seen us, you know, all over the world. I've watched United all over the world. The atmosphere was phenomenal. The, the, the game itself was ridiculous. And the result <laughs> was just amazing. It really was to win it the way we did. Because when Marcus went through in the 90th minute, I think it was, and missed, I thought that's our chance. I thought we're gonna that's going to come back to haunt us. And obviously yeah. they went ahead, I think, through Harvey Elliott. Um, it turns out as well, Marcus was offside, which was actually, I'm not, I know he, he shouldn't have missed, but... I'm kind of relieved he did because I think had he scored and it been given offside, the, the place would the, the atmosphere would have changed. And yeah. yet we kept going, the fans kept going, the players kept going, and we went for it. Too often this season, we've not gone for it. We've been defensive. We've tried to just sort of, you know, hit teams on the break. I know we did score on the break, but we've been a sort of very cagey or whatever. And we just went for it. At one point, I think we had Bruno Fernandes, Diogo Delo, and Anthony as our back three. Harry Maguire was up front. <laughs> Victor Lindelof was on the wing. It made no sense. Yeah. Ahmad Diallo, who, who's not played all season, who's not been fancied, gets the winner, then gets sent off for his second yellow for celebrating. <laughs> Limbs everywhere. It was just chaos. It really was. And like you say, Marcus is missing all his chances. Then he gets the equaliser. Then we get the winner. It was so good, honestly. And it's those moments that you, you live for as a football fan because you have a lot of, you know, I know it's all relevant and, and you put things in perspective like Coventry yeah. have been through far worse than I've been through as a United fan but for me as a United fan now this is our that time in terms of yeah. where we are in the league what our rivals are doing City are winning trebles Liverpool are winning trophies we're sort of you know looking through the glass with our noses against it going oh let us in yeah. it's, it's been horrible and yet yeah. you have those moments where you just think it's still great in it it's still yeah it's still all worth it. All that heartache, all that anger, everything you go through. <laughs> but that moment, I'm sure you guys can relate from what you did at Molyneux. When you have that moment, it's just there's nothing like it on earth. There really isn't. And that, for me, was one of the best moments I've had supporting Manchester United. And the fact it was against Liverpool, uh, our main arch rival, makes it all the better. It was just, it was just great. It really was. Yeah, definitely. You know, obviously, um, we'll, we'll talk about ours now, Mark. Our route to the uh, to the semi final. So, ours started off with Oxford. Um, you know, a comfortable six two victory. We we made it hard to start off with, but then I think our class showed, didn't it? Yeah, it was a good performance against uh, against Oxford. Uh, good clinical up front. Um, yes, they did equalise fairly quickly after we scored, but o overall, it was a good performance. And it, 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 at the time, I was like, oh, it makes a change to get to the fourth round because the amount of times we get knocked out in the third round, particularly <laughs> to lower league opposition, like last season was Wrexham. So I was just quite happy just to get to the fourth round. I didn't bring, think with it, I didn't envisage that we'd get to as far as the semi final playing, um, you know, the, you know, Man United. So, but obviously we'll get to that bit in a minute. But yeah, it was just nice to get to the fourth round. That was my first initial feeling. It was, it was a convincing win. Yeah, it was definitely a convincing win. You know, Joel Latty started the scoring off. Sheaf, Casey Palmer, uh, Callum O'Hare and Godden got two right, you know, quite close together right at the death. I think they just ran out of steam a little bit towards the end as well, didn't they? And and Godden, you know, we know how clinical Godden can be at times because he wasn't in the best of form, but, you know, he, he got two goals. So that pushed us into the fourth round. Um Sheffield Wednesday, uh, I think it was their place first. And it was the first time we saw Victor Torp and he scored a wonderful goal, uh, yeah. didn't he, just before half-time. How, how was the game for you, mate? Yeah, as you say, it was Victor Torp's debut and uh, he, he struggled a little bit to get into the game. But once he got forward and he got that goal, it was a, it was a really good strike. Um, the ball, he hit from distance, the ball moved, swerved a bit in the air. 
Um, they had a young keeper in goal, Sheffield Wednesday, who actually did a, had a really good game, actually, but on this occasion um, didn't really have a lot of chance to save it. So it was a really good, really good strike. And then so I just felt we allowed Sheffield Wednesday back into the game second half. It was disappointing. I think uh, from memory, Ellis Sims had a really good chance right at the start of the second half, which he misses. And then we allow Sheffield Wednesday um, to get an equaliser. And I walked away from that game thinking, although the pitch was um, absolute dog and pony, really, we, we should have we should be beating Sheffield Wednesday. We beat them the week before in the league. And I just, at the time, I was like, OK, we got them back at home, the replay, and, you know, got on our pitch. But it, the thing that, the thing is, is, is the fixture congestion, the number of games you've got to play, particularly obviously in the, champ- in the championship season, we got you know 46 games. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just we don't have a big squad either, so it was a game I felt we could have done without, but anyway, we, we won the replay pretty comfortably, so it was all good in the end. Yeah, you know, we had them back at our place. We won 4 1, like you said. Uh, KP, Callum O'Hare again coming up with the goals, scored two goals, and had you right with a goal as well. So that took us into the fifth round uh, after the replay. And let's face it, where probably everybody wants us to beat Man United, everybody was for Maidstone United, weren't they? You know, it was their dream. You know, they didn't want us, let's face it. They wanted a bigger side like a United or a Man City or a Liverpool or somebody like that. They didn't want little old Coventry. Uh, But the whole, it seemed like the whole of the, uh, the country wanted them to win rather than us, didn't it? But it didn't work out that way. Uh, how was the game for you? It was quite convincing, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I was, I'm nervous about the game because our record against non-league opposition hasn't been great. Um, obviously, last season we lost to Wrexham. We lost to Worcester City back in the League One sort of days. And uh, obviously, 1989, we lost to Sutton. So we've had we've had our fair share of shocks. And yeah, I mean, I was a little bit, you know, nervous about the game. But once the game got going, we, we, we were... You know, it's a really good performance, professional, and we showed them that we were the championship side, and, and we and we were, you know, we were we were far too strong for them in the end. And you know, I got good credit to Maidstone; they they um, they they gave it everything. Um, you know, they they done really well to get as far as they did. But um, you know, that was the start of Ellis Sims's you know re- return, real returns, you know, to form, and um, you know, he he scored some really good goals and. Uh, you know, it was also good to see Tavares get a couple of goals as well. So, overall, um, you know, a good win, a routine win. Um, and, you, and you're right, the whole country, barring us, wanted Maidstone to win. So, you know, that's why ITV turned up and broadcast the game. So, they wanted to see That's right. Shot. That's right. Um, so, it's quite happy that um, we, we, we won a big team on like Ipswich. Yeah, definitely. And obviously that led to the quarterfinal. For me, uh, as I said to Jay a minute ago, this was probably the 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 game of the route tie, if you like, or the, the weekend. Uh, 3-2 win over Wolves. Um, obviously, you know, we had a lot of fans go. It was an absolute brilliant day. Sims with two goals. Hadji with, you know, a last kick. Classic, brilliant goal. You know, it was a Premier League goal, really. Uh, against a, a good Premier League Wolves side that you know took United, um, you know to the death. Uh, did they beat you, Jay, as well, or have you? Did you beat them twice? Sorry, the... did you do Wolves? Did they have they beat you in the league? Um, no, we beat them at um, their place. Uh, we beat them at Old Trafford. Um, oh, did you? Um, yeah, the, the, it was oh, the only game, game of the season. season. It, mm. Yeah, it sort of set the tone, you know, because. What happened was, obviously, this season, after last season, we thought, you know, we had a great season last season, finished third, won the uh, Carabao Cup. So we're like, you know what? This is like, you know, everyone was feeling pretty confident going yeah. into into the season. And the opening game at Old Trafford against Wolves was was United were poor. Um, and is, is it the lad? Is it Cunha, the lad? Cunha, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely tore us apart. Then they had that incident, I don't know if you remember it, in the last minute where Onana's come out Nana. and basically cleared out. Yeah. Is it Dawson, I think? Yeah. They didn't get a penalty. Um, I think um, O'Neill, the manager, got booked for kicking off, which because he's like, and the referee's <laughs> gone over and he's thinking, he's going to give a penalty. He's going to look at the behind. Yeah. He wasn't. He was booking him. Um, so there was that one where we got away with it and then we played him at their ground and we were in control. 
everything's happy days. And then, like, United do every game this season. Before we knew it, it's 3 all. I think it was 2-1. It was 2-0, then it was 3-1 to United. We had a two-goal cushion. Then it was 3 all in the last minute, or the last, like, with two minutes to go in injury time. And then Kobe Mainu, who's been an absolute phenomenon this season, has yeah. been our, our main bright spark, one of our only bright sparks, if truth, uh, to be truthful. Um, he pops up with a great goal. And, you know, again, it was that was one of those moments we've had this season where you're like, honestly, you just go berserk because for him to score it as well, you've always got that affiliation, haven't you, with the kids that That's come right. through the academy. That's and right, to score yeah. that in, it was, I think it was like the 95th minute or something, 96th minute, really good goal as well. In a game where we'd thrown it away, it was it was great. It was a great feeling. But yeah, we've we've been fortunate. I think we're fortunate at Old Trafford. And I think at Molyneux, we probably deserved the win, even though we made hard work of it. I think on the, on the, if you look at the whole game, we yeah. were the better team. We just we just we just threw it away. It was sad because for half an hour at Molyneux, we played our probably our best football we played all season. And then as we often do, for no reason whatsoever, I can't even put my finger on why, we just suddenly stopped playing football and seemed to implode. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, Mark. We, you know, we we took them right to the death, didn't we? In that quarter final, how was you feeling about that game? Well, I know. I mean, you, you and me had this discussion before the game, and you want you wanted a, a Liverpool or a United or a City. I was like, no, I'm quite happy with Wolves because yeah. I felt it was a chance. And when you when you when you you know you get to the stage of the competition that you're going to get a Premier League side, and like the likelihood is is, is quite high, and. If I was to pick any team, I'd be happy with Wolves. And the reason being is um, local derby, um, they had quite a few injuries. So you felt there was, a, there was a chance that, you know, I'm not saying I didn't felt, I didn't think like we're going to beat Wolves, but I felt like, oh, you know, we've got, we've got a chance. And that's all you need is the chance. And on the day, we were fantastic. Um, we missed so many chances that game. I mean, that, that one thing, um, I want to say Sims missed a really easy chance first half. Uh, I think it was an open, an open goal almost. Yeah. And straight at the goalkeeper. Uh, when, we, when we score with, with Sims uh, from a free kick, um, just got in the far post and, and poked it in. And then Wolves, to be fair, uh, I think Al, Al Nuri, I think it is, um, you know, stole the show. They, they got they got ahead 2-1. Uh, and uh, their fans were, were buoyant and uh, were singing all the case of our Wembley, Wembley songs. And you think, great, we'll chuck this one away, um, 88 minutes. And then I just, I was sitting in the crowd, I was in the crowd thinking, look, don't give, just don't give up. You never give up in football, you know. You don't, you don't give up anything in life. You, you've got to keep fighting. You know, as our song goes, we, we fight till the game is won. And that's the most important thing. You keep fighting, you never give up. And, and we had that in spades. We kept going. We got that goal back uh, from Ellis Sims again, and I went absolutely berserk in the crowd. And then Hadji Wright, I'll never forget that goal. I, I literally the ball when the ball left his feet, and you see their keeper, um, he makes a dive. And you, and you just tell you can just tell he isn't. He's not going to save that. You just yeah. know he's not going to save it. And then you, once that ball, it's almost like a slow motion. And the ball when the ball leaves his the ball leaves his hand, you're like, okay, I'm just waiting for the ball to ripple into the back of the net, and it did go in. It went absolutely berserk. It's probably the most, yeah. it's probably the best for me as a Coventry fan. The best game I've been to in away from home, um, particularly. I mean, Middlesbrough away in the playoff semi final was brilliant, but this for me against a Premier League side, um, their, their tails are up. They were trying to waste time. Um, you've got the ball boy smirking at Robbins. There's a lot of things going on where I thought, you know, it was just it felt quite sweet. And to be fair to Wolves, their their fans were actually fantastic outside the ground. They, they yeah, they were. Yeah, they were. They wished us well. Uh, I'm not going to lie. When I when I saw uh, when I was thinking about who we're going to get the semi final, I was wanting Man United to beat Liverpool because I didn't want Liverpool in the semi final if if it would be drawn. I'd, I'd rather have United. In, in all honesty, I would. I think Liverpool are a better side, but um, I, you know, I've had United or Chelsea is who I wanted. Um, I think Chelsea are probably the weakest side in the competition. Um, I think City will, will win probably 4-5-0. or five nil. So I definitely didn't want Man City because they are probably the best side. And in all honesty, whoever wins this game are going to get Man City the final and likely to lose. So it's it's that's you know you never know anything can happen in the FA Cup. I'm hoping that we can win and Chelsea can beat City because I think then we can win the cup. But that that's that's me and my my sky blue tinted glasses on. But yeah, it was it, the Wolves game for me was just was a brilliant, brilliant win. Great day out, 
um it's just, just one you just never forget you know it's just just magic yeah definitely and obviously jay moving on to your sort of your last six premier league games we know that you haven't had uh the uh you know the the best season let's say compared to you know the man united of old if you like I think you've only won, out of the last six, uh, you've lost three, drew two, and you've only won one, I believe. Uh, yeah. You might be able to tell me if, if that's right or wrong. No, it's um, not. So, what does it come down to? Because, obviously, you know, that there's there's pressure on Ten Hag, there's pressure on, you know, the every single player at Manchester United, especially, you know, the likes of Harry Maguire, who's had his critics, you know, not just for United, but for England as well. What's it, what, what do you think the issues are at the moment? There's quite a lot of different th things and different reasons. I think that Manchester United have struggled this season. We've had a pretty horrendous injury record. I know all clubs get inju injuries, but I think we've had more injuries than any other club in the Premier League this season. And I think it's the, the players that have been injured as well. The, the big one that stands out for me is Lissandro Martinez. He's the mm. guy that makes us tick. I know he's a centre-back, but if you look at how Eric Tenag's trying to play, play out from the back, it's Martinez who's key to that. He's the one that can play out from the back. And he's been missing for basically the entire season. So I think we've suffered there. We've also suffered from... One or two players just seem, seeming to either get old or fall off a bit of a cliff. Like, look at Casemiro last season. For much of the season, he was phenomenal. This season, he looks old. He looks like he's just suddenly aged. Yeah. And he seems all well off the pace. He's diving into things sort of haphazardly. He's getting players are running past him and running around him. Like, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have seen that before. You wouldn't have seen it when he was at Real Madrid or even last season at United. So he's, his form's deserted him. Rashford, who couldn't stop scoring last season, just hasn't really got going this season. I think he's got about eight goals all season. When you look at last season, I think he got 30 and 40 goal involvements, whatever it was. So he was getting a goal almost every game. He was involved in a goal, whereas this this season it's not been happening for him. And then we've had other players who've been very erratic. Rasmus Hoyland has had a good season for me, but he went something like 14 Premier League games without a goal, which if he's your main striker, that doesn't yeah. help. No. Um, Onana, I think, has been very good in the last sort of five or six months, but he had a disastrous campaign in the Champions League. He, you know, this is a player who, not single-handedly, but had a massive impact at Inter Milan last season. Was one of the main reasons they got to the Champions League final. And this time round, I think he cost us our place in Europe. I really do. I think if you look at the Galatasaray game at home, for example, he was at fault for almost every goal. And then Copenhagen, I think, as well away, he, he made a bit of a mistake. It's a shame because he saved the penalty against Copenhagen at home. But all these little reasons, when you add them all up, it's not good. You know, it makes a, a bit of a, yeah. a disastrous season. And then you have a manager who, for whatever reason, hasn't been able to find his feet this season. Last season, everyone was buying into what Eric Tanag was doing because our home record was ridiculously good. We beat everyone at home. I think we lost the first two games at home or... I think we lost against Brighton on the first Premier League game and then Sociedad in the Europa. And then we beat City, Arsenal, Liverpool, Barcelona at Old Trafford. It became a fortress. He said, I want to make it a fortress. And it became one. And then we had all these you know, great cup runs, the final of the FA Cup, albeit ended in disappointment, winning the Carabao. We, we did OK in the Europa for a certain period until we got found out against Sevilla. So it looked like we were moving forward. And this season... The pressure's been on him. He hasn't really been able to get going. The team hasn't found a, a rhythm or a style. It looks like very disjointed. And you just sort of sat there scratching your head because this is a manager who, after his first season, I thought, brilliant, we've finally found someone who knows what he's doing and who can be the successor to Sir Alex Ferguson. And now the chances are, I don't know, but the chances are he's going to be out of a job in the summer. Yeah, obviously you did, you, you look, you mentioned... Your, your long list of injuries there. Again, you might be able to correct me if I'm wrong. You know, I went on a site the other day and and I just sort of... The, the list that it gave me of your injured players was Varane, Evans, Martinez, as you've mentioned, Lindelof, Shaw, uh, Martial. Did, have I, did I read something today? It might have been a load of Codswallop, but did I see something that his left man United now, Martial, I don't think he's left yet. Um, oh, has he not? Know, unless this is new to me, if he has. Um, right, okay. I think that he's, his contract's out in the summer. And listen, you never know in Manchester United, but I would be amazed 
if he got his contract renewed because right, okay. he's he's been he's I think he's missed two thirds of the last three seasons or something. He's he's his injury or two seasons, his injury record has been terrible. And yeah. it's a shame because it looked like he might be given um a bit of a, a lifeline by Eric Tanar, because when Eric Tanar came in, Marshall had had a bad time of it in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's last season, Ralph Ragnick, the, the Ragnick season, if you will. Tanag obviously liked him, rated him, played him. At one point, it looked like, OK, pre-season, he did well. Gets injured, though. Then when he comes back in, he's scoring goals. You think there might be some air. But he summed it up for me at the end of last season when I think it was the last game of, of the Premier League against Fulham, I think it was, Old Trafford. And he gets injured after the final whistle. It was like he got injured. And I don't know, he stood around holding his hamstring when we were doing the sort of the announcements. So he misses the FA Cup final. And he just thought, he's, he's done in it, Martial. So, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it's the end for him at United. Okay. Uh, I, I can't pronounce his name. Uh, Malakea. Oh, Malassia. Malassia, Malassia, sorry. Yeah, yeah Malassia. there's been a bit of intrigue here because everyone's been like, you know, where's where's Malassia? It's like, where's Wally? Where's Malassia? Everyone's like, we don't know where he is. No one's seen right, him. Okay. You know, he's become the forgotten man. There's always conspiracy theories. Does he even, you know, does he even exist anymore? People messing about. Obviously. <laughs> um, does he, does something happened to him. The, the latest reports were, I think he had surgery and I don't think it went well. Oh, okay. Don't quote me on that, but that is the, I yeah, think yeah, the latest yeah, yeah. reports. I think today were that he's back at Carrington and basically the season's done for him. Okay. And it was meant to be an operation and he was going to come back. I think he came back and then he broke down, I think. So I think that the surgery might not have gone the way it should have done. So okay. that's why we've not seen Tyro Malassia. And it's annoying because he's not necessarily a first-team player, but when you've got Malassia in the squad or in the team, it means that if you need to, you can move Luke Shaw to left centre back, who does very well there. When Martinez is missing, but obviously Luke Shaw's injured as well, so you're missing both left backs. And the irony yeah. is, we had um, Sergio Reguilon on loan from Spurs. We let him go back to Spurs. They, I think they sent him to Brentford, and then we lost both centre backs. We had well, we, we lost Luke Shaw. We already had Malasia missing, which was really stupid and confusing. We also had Alvaro Fernandez who's a left-back. I think he ended up at Benfica out on loan. We had Brandon Williams, who's a left-back. I think he ended up at Ipswich. We loaned him out. Yeah. And you think we've literally had to play Victor Lindelof or Aaron wan at left-back, neither of whom are left-backs. And yet we're letting players go out on loan who are left-backs or sending them back when we've had them on loan, whilst we've got our two first-choice left-backs out of the game. It's, it's just been really weird what's going on at United with the left-back situation. And some of it is unfortunate, but some of it is of our, our own making. Yeah. Um, are any of them likely to be back for a week on Sunday or are they all going to be out? I mean, the manager's press conference, obviously, for the, the, the Bournemouth game is going to take place. We're recording this on the Thursday. That'll be, I think, it's the Friday. Friday, so we yeah. we might get a bit of an update. Um, I don't know is my honest answer. Okay, that's I, fine. I, 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 I think not. I think okay. that the chances are... For most of those players, the players that are first team players, we're looking now, and I'm not trying to be dismissive of Coventry because we've got to get past you, but we're looking at some of them might might be available if we get to the FA Cup final. That could be a game okay. where you go, is it worth it? You know, if you've got yeah. Luke Shaw available for the FA Cup final, you play him. If you've got yeah. Lissandro Miners and he's fit, because we rushed him back, I think, but if he's fit for the FA Cup final, or maybe, you know, the, the, the game before or whatever, I think we've got Arsenal later on or whatever it is, and then you play him. But now, I don't think you risk it. And I think that that could be a bit of a gamble because it's an FA Cup semi-final. And I know Coventry in the Championship, but you still got to give them the respect they deserve because they've got there for a reason. But I think it would be a bit of a risk. And I think we might have learned from the Brentford game where you look at Miners, he, he came on, and then a day later, he's injured. Yeah. And I, think that's, I don't think that's a coincidence. Luke okay. Shaw, the Luton game, I think it was, the manager said, mm, it's touch and go. He plays and then he ends up coming off and he's injured again. So I think this manager now will err on the side of caution. Okay, fair enough. No worries. Mark, any questions for Jay at the minute? Um, no, nothing to make, no. No, okay, cool. Um, so, was your reaction when Coventry came out the hat and you found out that you had Coventry, was your reaction the same as Neville's, the same as Mark Goldbridge's? You know, were you absolutely in jubilation because you're through to the final or was you more of a cautious Man United fan? I think this 
several ways to look at it. I think Mark mentioned it earlier. You can see City winning the FA Cup again. And I get where you're coming from because they're the favourites. And the likelihood is they'll win it. And the likelihood is, in all honesty, they will get past Coventry and get beat in the final against Manchester City. <laughs> so, And I was there at Wembley last season. I saw my lad and I was telling him, how, don't worry, we'll win this. And as I was talking, we just sat down, Gundogan scored. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I can't be too sort of positive that this is a great, you know, a great, a, a, yeah, a great yeah. sort of fixture for United because you can look at it and you can go, okay, it's the easier one, obviously, yeah. and there's a very good chance we're going to our success second successive final, but there's also a very good chance we're going to have City in the final. I would have rather have had City in the semi final, genuinely. If I'm, if we're going to have to beat Manchester City to win the FA Cup, I'd rather face them in a semi final. And if it don't work out, fine. We lose the semi-final. Okay, it's horrible. It's Manchester City, but I can live with it a lot better than if we get to another final and we face Manchester City and we lose again, which is yeah. what I fear is going to happen. And also, I, you can't be too dismissive of Coventry. You, you can't just say, "Oh well, it's, it's Coventry. We're through to the final." We're not. I just I said earlier we struggled against Newport County. We lost at home to Fulham. We've, we've, we struggled. We struggled. I know we beat Wolves twice, but we struggled against them a couple of times, especially at Old Trafford. And you've got to respect a team that's got to an FA Cup semi final. You didn't get there from a load of buys. You got there from beating good teams. So I don't think you can go, well, that's it. I'm booking me, me trip to Wembley for the final. You have to give commentary the respect they deserve. And also, I'm dreading the fact that I'm probably going to have to watch my team lose to Manchester City in the final. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Obviously, Mark, we are. You know, we are top goal scorers uh, for league in the FA Cup. We've scored 19 goals. Man United have scored 11. Uh, we know that we leak goals. Uh, so I think it's going to be quite an open game because, you know, United leak goals. They can score goals. We leak goals, but we can also score goals. I think it's going to be a high scoring game. Or, or there's going to be definitely goals in it. Whether it's massively high scoring, I'm not sure. We'll go into predictions a little bit later. What are your feelings going into the game? Uh, I'm, I'm looking, looking forward to it, really. I mean, you can enjoy it. There's no pressure on us. Everyone expects May United to win. Uh, we're the underdogs. And I, I think it's quite nice being underdogs because, uh, you know, the pressure's on United to win. You know, Eric Ten Hag needs a trophy. Uh, Jim Ratcliffe has obviously come on board. He's spent, put a lot of money into the club. And he's under pressure. And United are under pressure to win. You know, I know they've got a lot of injuries, but whatever team they put out are going to be a strong side. So, from our point of view, um, it's an, it's really we've got nothing to lose. If we lose, it doesn't matter. It's been a good day out, and we concentrate on, on getting back into the Premier League. Um, if we win, fantastic. We've got a final, and we will probably get Man City and we'll probably lose. But you know, it's it, it's it's a really really exciting game for, as a Coventry fan. It's a great day out. Um, I at the start of the season, I think. I could, I'd probably speak for all Coventry fans and say we don't envisage us playing in a, at Wembley. If you said to me we play at Wembley a semi-final, um, you know, I'd be laughing because I just could not see that happen. So, from our point of view, it's it's nothing, we've got nothing to lose. Uh, and I said the same against Wolves, we've got nothing to lose. We're playing a Premier League side, we won. And I think sometimes when you're playing in, in, in games where you're not expected to win, it can bring out the best in players. Players will up their game because it's Man United. They yeah. want that you know they've got the cameras on, and you know Callum O'Hare obviously he's likely to be leaving us. If he put you know he's he's going to want to put on a really good shift for this game because he wants to show that he he's quality, and I think that's a play United will will need to keep an eye on because he's got the ability to to unlock unlock teams, create chances. Obviously, Ellis Sims has been scoring a lot of goals. He's been in good form. He's got Premier League experience with Everton. Hadji Wright, US international. Um, it's got it's got class and you know look United will be will be they're going to be favourites and rightly so they're, they're, they're you know they're playing us they they they're expected to win but I, I don't think I don't think I don't think United should be taking us too too lightly at all I think if we turn up and we re turn up I think we can push them I really do I think we can beat United um, you know it might go to extra time on that but. I, I don't think it, I'm hoping, and I'm, I'm fairly confident it, it will be a close game. Yeah, hopefully. Any questions for us, Jake? Because obviously, um, you mentioned before that you don't sort of, you know, 
massively follow the championship because obviously you're busy with with Manchester United and doing things like that. Any questions for us that you want to ask? I'm just curious, just um, for for a go, what is there a player that you guys fear? Is there a player that for United that you guys are going? Because I know I get that your point about City and and looking at and going United are probably the easiest or one of the easier teams out of the three that were there. I think one of you mentioned Chelsea as well. But is there a player where you go, I don't fancy facing him today? Or are you just looking at United and going, this is a United team that, whilst they're in the Premier League and the six in the Premier League, they're not vintage? No. Well, to be fair, my my main concern is probably Garnacho. in all honesty. garnacho has been the one that, you know, has been the bright spark, especially in the Premier League as well for you. Garnacho's the one that, that, you know, down that right-hand side, he's quick, you know, he's very skillful. he's got an eye for goal. We know the type of goals that he can score. Can't remember who he scored that scissor, that volley scissor kick against Everton, I think it was, Yeah. Um, that he scored that brilliant goal. We know what he's got in the locker and it concerns me slightly just because he's going to be against Bidwell. Now, Bidwell, you know, is a solid sort of... Seven, eight out of ten consistently. He isn't the quickest, and that that bit concerns me because I think with Garnacho's speed, he might just knock it past him and run. However, Bidwell is a good defender; is an old school defender, and I think you know one one kick or you know one really good challenge on Garnacho, and I think he can go in his shell a little bit as well. Um, and, and Bidwell can do that to you. Um, but you've already mentioned him as well, Mainu. Uh, we haven't even touched on Bruno Fernandes, but, you know, he's been out of form a lot. He blows hot and cold for you. Just like that, you know, again, the, the whole of Man United, you know, what five minutes in a game or ten minutes a game, you can blow teams away. And then for the rest of it, you let them in, you let them have chances and, you know, like Mark said already, with Ellis Sims, with Hadji Wright, with Callum O'Hare, unfortunately, Casey Palmer, who I think would, you know, give your back four a torrid time, is unfortunately suspended because he picked up a second yellow for celebrating when we scored at Wolves. Uh, it's a shame that he's not going to be playing. But I think, as I've already mentioned, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be like a basketball game. I think it's going to be end to end. I think it's going to be very expansive. You know, you like to play football. We like to play football. I think it is a game though where we're going to be definitely the uh, counter attacking side. You know, like you were against Liverpool to a certain degree. I think that's what's going to. We're going to let you come on, and I think we'll catch you. I think we'll catch you on the break and. You know, Mark, again, Mark's rightly mentioned, you know, Ellis Sims is, you know, joint top goal scorer in the FA Cup. He's up there with Haaland on five goals, I think it is. Um, so we've got people that can score. We've got people that can trouble you. And just with a weakened defence, I, I think... I I, th I think we I think we might do it. I really do. I, I think we might... I think we stand a really, really good chance. Um so, going into that little bit then, can I get a prediction out of you, Jay? Do you do predictions? Yeah, yeah, they're terrible. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm always wrong. Um, well, that's what, go for a United win then, mate. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm going to, which will be great news for you, Steve. Trust me, my record in predictions. Listen, I understand what you're saying. I've heard a lot of good things about the kid, right, and Ellis Sims. I know Ellis Sims, um, I mentioned he was at Everton, money. Um, That's right, yeah. Yeah, I remember him at Everton, um, and I've, I've not seen a lot of coverage. I saw the Wolves game, and I thought he did well for, like Mark was saying, when he missed that sitter and then kept going. I respect yeah. that. I, I admire players that do that. Don't let your heads drop. Keep going and um, help his team get the win. But with all that being said, and even though United are erratic, we can still get results. We have still got good players. And I think that everyone in that United shirt should know, wearing United shirt should know, this is your chance to end the season on a high. Winning the FA Cup is a big trophy. It's a big deal. And we, we, we're sort of falling away in the league now. And that's almost, that's pretty much done. I don't think we've got any chance of getting Champions League football next season. So the um, only thing that is left is to win the FA Cup. And a lot of these players haven't won much. They've won a Carabao Cup. Some of them, that's all they've won. I think Bruno Fernandes and Harry Maguire and players like that, that's all they've ever won. Yeah. So... 
they, they'll want to win this one. They'll want to at least try and get revenge over Manchester City. And obviously, to do that, you've got to get past Coventry. So, despite being a very pessimistic fan, and despite having a, a lot of respect for Coventry and what you've done to get to that semi-final, I still think we've got enough to get over the line. I do. I think you'll score. I think you'll have chances. But I think United will just have too much on the day. So, I'm going to go 3-1 United. OK, fair enough. Mark, can I get a prediction from you? Yeah, I'll, well, I just want to go to his, uh, Jay's earlier question about players that um, I fear. I think Mindy definitely is one that stands out. I thought he was fantastic against Man United, and uh, I thought I mean Rashford. I know he's not been in great form, but he's always a threat. I've always had I've, I kind of had like envisions of seeing him running at our players um, and, and being a bit of a terror. So I think Rashford's another player. I think on his day, he's, he's still a really, really, really world class player in my opinion. So I think we've got to be on our, on our, on our guard against him. Answering your question, Stuart, about the game, um, you, I know you, you said it's going to be a lot of goals. You've probably probably been nil nil now. You said all that. It's going to be a good, <laughs> good play now. <laughs> um, my view on the game, um, I think from our point of view, we just got to keep it tight. We've got to frustrate United. Um, if, if they get a couple of early goals, I think United are going to win comfortably. Um, if we can keep it tight um, and, and keep the game alive, I think the first half is important. If we can get through the first half. At worst, maybe one nil down, we've got a chance. You know, even at one nil down, you feel like you can, you can get a second out of the game. So, um, I'm going to say we will win on extra time, four three. I think it's going to be. A, I think we're going for a high score in three three, um, and I think we're going to nick it four three extra time. Wow. Okay. Four three. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna... kind of sitting. I'm, I'm kind of sitting on the fence, Stuart. As you may, may yeah. Have. Well, that that's just what you do, Mark, always, isn't it? You sit on the fence. Doors. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, so I never back against Coventry. The worst I'll ever do is a uh, is a draw. Uh, even if I think that we're going to lose, uh, I'll always go for a draw on predictions. However, I do think it's going to be an open game. I do think it's going to be expansive. Um, I think there is going to be goals in it. I think we are going to win. Uh, I just I just think if we turn up. If we don't turn up, because we've we've played games against Preston where we haven't turned up and we've got rolled over. If that happens, then yes, United are completely going to beat us. I just feel that we've we've played there before. We've got a lot of players that have played at Wembley. They're not going to be, you know, the, the occasion isn't going to affect them as much as maybe we think it is. I think there will be goals. And I think we're going to win it 4-2. I think there's going to be goals in it. It's going to be end-to-end. Uh, it's going to be a basketball game. It might even be you score one, we score one for a little bit, and then it settles down. But I think I think we're going to win it 4-2. Uh, to be fair, Jay, I'm rubbish at predictions as well. So I'm probably going to be wrong, and, and you're going to absolutely annihilate us. But uh, I, I think it's going to be a 4-2 uh, a victory to City. Uh, so, just before we do finish up, any further questions, Mark, for Jay? No, nothing more for me. No, all good. Lovely. Uh, Jay, if it's okay, we do a little bit of a quick fire with any guests that we have on. Um, ideally, I would like one-worded answers, but it doesn't matter if it goes into a sentence or anything like that. So, the first one is Old Trafford. Um... I thought that was going to be the easy one, if I'm Sorry. honest. Um, <laughs> iconic. Okay. Um, player of the season so far? Uh, Ten Hag. Mm, erratic. Okay. Best away fans at Old Trafford that you've seen? Um... Probably Bayern Munich. Okay, fair enough. And what happens next next season for Man United? We use this every year at United, this one word. It's a reset. Okay. It's going to be another Re reset, reset, either with okay. Tenag or without him because of the new structure. But yeah, it'll yeah. be another reset, unfortunately. Okay, no worries. That's it. Nice and simple. Nothing in there that's too bad. Uh, once again, thank you very much for joining us, uh, Jay. Uh, it's been a pleasure. This will go out on Monday, obviously leading up to the game on Sunday. I got it right again. 
Um, yeah, so once again, thank you very much. Uh, Mark, thank you also. Jay, when we finish recording, don't shoot off and we'll have a quick chat afterwards as well, if that's okay. That's Brilliant. Cool. Just before we do go, just let us know where we can find you again, mate. Yeah, you find me on Stretford Paddock and on your socials, Jay Meyer. So, yeah, go and check out um, Stretford Paddock. If you're a Coventry fan and you want to see a little bit about United, hopefully you can get a good understanding of where we're at in a minute and probably fill you with confidence when you see a load of angry United <laughs> fans moaning about how bad we've been this season. <laughs> Fantastic. So, guys, just remember where you can find us as well. We're available on Twitter or X, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. We're sponsored by Right Steel Fabrications. We're partnered with the Anecdote Sports Bar. You can all find us on podcasts, so Spotify, Amazon, uh, wherever you get your podcasts from. If you follow us on YouTube, please go and like and subscribe and rate us five stars on podcasts. So once again, thank you to my co-host, Mark. Much appreciated. And thank you for Jay from the Stretford Paddock for joining us. Um, good luck, uh, apart from, obviously, uh, a week on Sunday. Uh, cheers. Thank you very much, guys. Play up Sky Blues. Mm -hmm.